Hey everyone, Chaps here, and again, yes, this is a Gears video, there's a reason for the Halo gameplay, I'll get to that later. And this is a follow-up to my discussion around why many hardcore Gears fans are no longer playing Gears 5. If you missed that, you can find it linked down below. As a quick recap, I mentioned four pain points as to why people left. Bugs, as in the game was buggy at launch and still is buggy. Content, as in the game doesn't have enough content, which I actually think it does, but it was just too little too late in regards to maps and it was actually the oversaturation of content when it came to cosmetics. Third was the lack of proper goals and objectives, and lastly was the miscellaneous fun factor, where I mainly focused on the lack of a casual, carefree environment. Today, I want to focus in on a few of those and discuss what I think could be done in the future. I feel that a majority of gamers fall into three key categories. Competitive players, not just pros, but those who want to win, and those who want to prove that they're good at the game. Then there's the hardcore players, who are typically pretty good, but may not be the most competitive people. And lastly, the casual player, who's just there to have a good time. And no, not everybody falls into one single category. Depending on how you're feeling, you can float between them. So okay, with these three categories defined, what can we do to satisfy them? For the competitive players, I think it's pretty simple. They want a competitive environment in which they can challenge themselves and prove themselves. What better vehicle for this than ranked matches? A true skill ranking system that lets them see their progress, match up against similar opponents, and have a visible goal to strive for. Furthermore, adding leaderboards will allow those in the top echelon to see their finer details on where they stand, or even just compare themselves to their friends. And honestly, I think the ranking system that the game launched with was actually pretty good in terms of being an objective ranking system. A lot of people said it didn't feel good, but I think it actually did a pretty good job of ranking people properly. And if you're going for a ranking system, you want something that's accurate, even if it doesn't feel perfect. So to cap it all off, we need a reward of some sort. None of this timed exclusive BS that rotates each season. I see something that functions like this. In the lobby, you can see everyone's rank. You unlock an emblem, symbolizing your high watermark rank, so it's something to show off and be proud of. If you're currently in the highest tier, you could get a really cool emblem, again something to show off, but this resets each season. It's really just to show that you're currently one of those top players. And lastly, if you reach the highest tier, you unlock a character skin and weapon skin set. Again, something to show off. And again, not something that rotates each season. This is just the reward. Not a season 1 reward or a season 2 reward. This is the reward. Oh, and by the way, you can have the same sort of thing for Horde with leaderboards and rewards. But chaps, if the reward doesn't change each season, what makes people want to come back and keep playing once they get it? Well, if they fall into this category of being a competitive player, they're probably not just in it for the reward. It's a nice bonus, but really, they're there to prove that they're the best. They're playing for the excitement of winning and holding those top slots. But now we get to what I labeled as the hardcore players who aren't super competitive. How do we keep them coming back? Well, my answer to that would be goals and objectives. Let's start with the obvious, which is some earnable or unlockable rewards. Sure, TC can keep pumping out skins and selling stuff, but let's set aside some of the cosmetics to use for actually rewarding the players for achieving certain tasks. Obviously, some will be those stupid, monotonous tasks that Gears 5 has, but what about the real challenges? Anyone know what this gameplay footage is that I'm showing here? This is my friends and I doing one of the Vidmaster challenges from Halo 3. Why are we doing it? Well, I guess right now we're just doing it for fun, but why did I do it originally? To prove that I could, to tackle a challenge. Gears has even done things like this in the past. Master Escape with no shots fired. No spending power on Insane. Lift with all soldiers. Kill 10 leaders in Guardian. What about the all soldier survival on Terminal from Judgment? All of these were fantastic achievements that offered up a nice challenge. It was fun proving that you could do it, and once it was done, you could help others with the achievement. Even once the content cycle for the game ends, TC still has the ability to provide challenges to the community. And this is key, this is something TC could even be doing right now for Gears 5. Issue a challenge. Ideally, add an achievement. But hey, everyone's either playing on an Xbox that can stream and record, or a PC that can stream and record. There's ways to get proof. Issue a challenge to the community. Think of a difficult task, and let people try to complete it. Even if there's no real reward, it's something to engage with the community and keep people playing. If someone is streaming the challenge, tweet it out. Post clips from people attempting the challenge. I mean, come on, there's so many random things people could do that aren't even only hard, but they're also fun. Like we said, spend no power on Drydock Horde in Gears 4, or the achievement for doing no power spend and the one for doing all soldiers on lift. We decided, you know what? 
We're pretty good at this. Let's combine both of those into a single run and do it all together. It's things like this where if the coalition or the community can come up with these challenges and the coalition puts out an official challenge type thing on their website or on Twitter and say, hey, go do this and we'll post some clips of you. Or hey, the first few teams to prove that they can do this reward, we'll give them a couple in-game skins or something. It's something that they can do right now that would take some groups, like my friends and I, and probably convince us to go play because we actually have something to work towards. I will admit this challenge system only reaches a very small subset of the community if it doesn't have any in-game tracking. Most players never go on Twitter, forums, Reddit, or anything to find said challenges, so what about the rest of the players? That's where I really feel like the track challenges come into play. The War Journal in Gears 2, and especially in Gears 3, was fantastic for tracking stuff. Yes, it had some of those awesome earnable rewards and challenges, but it also had some of those stupid, overly grindy achievements. But you know what it did right? In some cases, some of the seemingly overly grindy achievements, like Seriously 3.0, was broken down into sub-challenges that seem reasonably obtainable. Many things you got by simply playing, some you would get naturally if you just adjusted your playstyle slightly, and even others were those proper challenges. They didn't take too long, but they were a true challenge to work towards. Through these various different styles of sub-challenges, you're constantly seeing your progress progress. Sure, there's some things that were a grind, but they were a reasonable grind. By combining many of these so-called reasonable grinds, you create a long-lasting goal or achievement that keeps people coming back. Compare this to Gears 5. Yeah, we have Seriously, which has some sub-steps, but we have those stupid, crazy, grindy things that are overwhelming and give the impression that they're just trying to keep people playing. Yes, that was the purpose of Seriously 3.0, but because it had so many sub-steps, it didn't really feel that bad. That was a bit of a rant there, but you get the point. The occasional grind is fine, but don't make it so blatantly obvious. Create a set of smaller challenges that add up to something greater. And I guess something else to hit on here are what the actual rewards are. Just as with the rank stuff, I feel like the rewards should be something static. Again, just like the rank stuff, don't rotate season to season, don't make them limited time, and for the love of god, don't make them purchasable. Make the rewards have meaning. Make people earn them. Sure, some of the stuff can be purchasable, but there needs to be a balance. Gears 5 went the route of basically everything is purchasable. They're after those short-term gains. And now that people are tired of it and they just bought what they want, it's easy for them to move on to other games. Gears 3 made you earn stuff. Even once the game stopped selling skins and DLC, people kept playing to unlock those long lead time items. Find that proper balance between short-term gains and long-term engagement. I don't have all the answers, I didn't study this stuff in school or become a game developer, but surely the way they're doing it now just isn't working. Okay. So we have ranks and leaderboards to keep the competitive people hooked on the game, and now we have objectives, rewards, and a sense of community to keep the hardcore players hooked, and we have some long-lasting achievements with sub-steps to keep people working towards a goal. So lastly, we get to the casual player. And yeah, I personally bounce down into this category every so often, actually I'm probably in this category pretty frequently. So what can the coalition do here? Well I see two things that can be done, and it all comes down to variety. For starters, having the right variety of intensity levels is critical. We have the hyper-intensive rank modes, we also have the relatively intensive normal modes. Like Gears is inherently a high skill game, and the close quarters nature means that even for a standard match, you can get your heart pounding. What's missing is the bottom tier, the experience that is carefree. Yeah, we have that in the form of casual horde or escape or even campaign, but that can get repetitive and many players want a PvP experience. The Coalition focused so much on balance in the past that they often overlooked the wild card aspect of fun. Not everything needs to be perfectly balanced. Take Fiesta in Halo, everyone spawning with random weapons. That's just a fun mood, and it certainly isn't fair and balanced. And that kind of brings us to the other part of variety that's missing, and that's the variety of experiences. Again, rank stuff can attract one group, the casual stuff can attract another, and the standard modes attract the middle group. But none of that really matters if it all blurs together. If I'm a sweaty ranked warrior and I want a break and I hop over into non-ranked, it won't be too different. I'd stomp on the weaker players, but I'm still just playing to win and playing with the same mechanics. There needs to be something that offers a truly different experience. In Horde and Escape, we have a few things that help with that. Different enemy sets and objectives help. Changing up classes and cards makes a huge difference. And let's not forget mutators and modifiers, which I still feel were poorly implemented, but they get the job done. 
For verses though, we're severely lacking. We have some different modes, which helps, but outside of free-for-all and arcade, which they removed from matchmaking, most modes are very similar in playstyle. Special events occasionally assist as well here, but honestly a lot of them start to feel like the same thing over and over again. So what should be done? I think a first key step is opening up the private options. I've got a series dedicated to what I'd like to see there, which you can check out linked down below, but give players the freedom to make some truly innovative game modes. I believe it was Halo Reach that had something called Grab Bag, where it was a playlist that was basically a collection of fun community-inspired maps and modes. The playlist was like nothing else in the game, and even the modes within the playlist were all completely different from each other. It's not something I played every time I hopped on, but if I wanted a casual experience, it was the go-to place. And even if I wanted to get sweaty, it was still a nice change of pace. Okay, let's recap a few things here. We have three main groups of players. Those who want to utilize ranked play to show that they're the best. Those who are mainly playing for fun, but need some form of objective to go for. And for them, a proper set of challenges and achievements should do the job. And lastly, the casual player who's just looking for some carefree fun. In which case, a casual mode would be ideal, even if it's not perfectly fair and balanced. And then, no matter which group you're in, you occasionally need a break. Perhaps that can be obtained by stepping down a tier in regard to challenge, or perhaps that's through switching over to some PvE content. Or perhaps, maybe, just maybe, the Coalition will figure out how to bring us a PvP option that truly has a variety of playstyles supported. Hell, even Overrun 2.0 would work here. I think that's enough ideas for now. As future games start getting announced, I feel like this topic will certainly be revisited in the future. In the meantime, what do you think? What could they do to actually provide some incentive to keep playing? And maybe more importantly, what do you think they could do to Gears 5 to bring people back without putting in too much effort from the Coalition? Let us know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you think we earned it, please consider hitting that like button. And for more gaming content, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you next time. And wait, while I have you here on this end screen, if you want some non-gaming content, jump over to our second channel. I've got product reviews, woodworking content, and even some financial planning guides. Okay, so for real this time, see ya.